morning, everybody. Welcome back or to the channel. So today is New Year's Eve, and I just want to wish you all a very safe but happy New Year. Now, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to be doing a few modifications to the bike build, but we're not doing any of those bikes. We're going to be doing a couple modifications to my mountain bike. Now, in case you missed my last video, I just recently picked up a Schwinn Axum DP mountain bike. It's a 29 inch mountain bike. It has the dropper post. It has a lot of great features to it right out of the gate. I think it's a really great bike, but I always do a bunch of little modifications to all of my mountain bikes just to make them a little bit more functional for me. And I like to make the bike look a little bit different. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at what we're gonna be doing. Now I'm not gonna go over all of the specifications on this bike because I already did that on a previous video when I introduced this bike. Now, one of the very first modifications I did to this bike, which I do to all of my mountain bikes, is I replaced the brakes. Now, this bike came with front and rear disc brakes, but they were mechanical brakes. I always swap mine out with the Shimano MT200s. I think these are a great hydraulic brake. They're not super expensive. You could maybe pick them up online for maybe a couple hundred bucks. Uh, maybe cheaper if you catch them on sale or maybe you can buy them used off eBay. But I really like these brakes because they typically tend to be the lowest cost option out there, but they really do function great and they're super easy to install. Now, I did not film the install of these brakes because I've already done a video on that when I did my Schwinn boundary build last year. It's the same concept. They're super simple and easy. But all you got to do is there's two bolts back here, right there. On your existing brakes, take those two bolts out. You'll cut off your zip ties along the bike to get rid of the cable. That pops right off. You have to take your grips off. Then you just basically unbolt the factory brake, slide it off. And then with the new MT200s, you take this bracket right here, slide it back on, bolt it down, zip tie it all the way down and bolt it right back up into place. But it is a very simple modification to do. And here's the front. Again, they work out great. I'm really happy with them. And the main reason I really, really like these hydraulic disc brakes, when you're flying down a trail, and you wanna make sure you have maximum grip, you really want your hand gripped on here really well. You really don't wanna to have to take your most of your fingers off of the main grip to work the brakes because then you lose support of your steering. With the Shimano MT200s, you literally could just take one finger off and pull with one finger. That's how easy they are to activate and you don't have to put much pressure on them. You just pull a little bit and you got maximum stopping power. So as far as braking goes, I always recommend if your bike already has the front and back disc brakes, you should upgrade to a hydraulic brake system like the Shimano MT200s, just because they're gonna make braking so much better and so much easier. So moving on from that, everything else is stock. The only thing that I did to this bike so far was upgrade the hydraulic brakes. Now, what are we gonna be installing today? Let's take a look. Now, my wife got me a lot of this stuff for Christmas, so I was pretty excited to get that because as you know me, I like to modify my vehicles, my mountain bikes and everything. So anything that I can get that allows me to modify my vehicles or my mountain bike and so forth, I'm really excited by that. So these right here are the Race Face Atlas lightweight aluminum handlebars. These have a 1.25 rise, which is what I was hoping for because if you come over here and look real quick, the factory handlebars don't have much of a rise. They're pretty much almost straight across. And this stem is a little further out as well. So because I'm tall and I do have long arms, what happens with this particular setup here is I end up leaning over way too far. And when I'm leaning over, I end up having my head lifted up and it puts a lot of strain on my neck. So what I wanted to do is get bars that would put my hand grips about an inch or an inch and a half higher. And that should really help with my neck strain. So let's go see what else we have. So we got the race face blue handlebar because I'm trying to go with more of a red and blue and maybe a silver theme on that bike. So I got the blue handlebar. I got race face red hand grips here, which are pretty nice. I got this stem right here. It's not quite the same red, 
Let's face it, most of this stuff never matches 100% because each manufacturer and each different part always comes in a slightly different shade. But I got this new red stem here from Fun Mountain Bike. Uh, there's their website there. But all this stuff came from Amazon, so I'll make sure to put links in the description for everything. And then I got new pedals. These are the red Chester race face pedals, which I love. I put these on my last mountain bike build. They're very nice and very grippy, and they're not too expensive either. So let's go ahead and start tackling all of this. But the first thing I need to do is start taking all that old stuff off the bike. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is get an Allen key in these grips, loosen those off. Those will pop right off. I gotta get another Allen key right under here. Loosen that, that'll allow the brake to slide off and then I need another Allen key on the dropper post bracket here and slide that off. So once I go ahead and get all that loosened up and taken off, then we can start loosening the stem here and get the handlebar off. So I'm just gonna take an Allen wrench here and pop out those four bolts. That should loosen that up and I can pop the whole handlebar off and then we can start taking this off to get to the stem. Okay, so we just got the hand grips off and I just wanna mention it's always good to have a good set of Allen wrenches laying around because you're gonna need a variety of different wrenches to get a lot of these bolts off. So for example, I just used the number three uh, Allen wrench here to get these hand grips off and then I'll have to use a different one for the brake, a different one for the dropper post bracket, and probably a different one up here and a different one here. So always make sure you have a good set of Allen wrenches and then that'll help make your life a lot easier doing all of this. Okay, so I just went ahead and I got everything taken off. I got the hand grips off, I got the brakes off, I got the dropper post bracket off. Next, I could just go ahead and take these bolts off to take the handlebar off, but because I'm replacing the stem as well, I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen this top bolt here for now, but I'm not gonna take it out all the way because if you take this bolt out, your whole front fork can fall right out. So I'm just gonna loosen this bolt here, and then I'm gonna loosen this bolt here and that bolt there. Once I loosen those bolts, I can sort of hold everything in place, and then I can slide the whole stem with the handlebars right off as one complete package. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with putting the new stem on to tighten that down so I don't have to worry about the fork dropping out. Okay, so bad news. After doing a trial test fit of the new stem, before I actually installed it, I actually came over here and just put the new handlebar in. And as you can see here, even with them fully tightened, it's a little bit off. So I must have either bought the wrong one or they sent me the wrong stem. Either way, I'll have to deal with that at another time. But as of right now, the stem is too big. So I'm gonna have to use the factory stem for now, which this will fit in. So all I gotta do is slide this in and then put that on like so, tighten it down and we'll be good to go. So again, I didn't have to mess around with taking this off yet, but I am glad I test fitted the bars with the new stem first because I found out that the stem is too big. So I didn't even have to take all this stuff off. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and put these handlebars on like so. I, I'll deal with replacing the stem at a later date. And at least we can get the bars on and the pedals on and the grips on. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so we went ahead and just put the handlebars on using the factory stem for now. I got everything else put on. They're not fully tightened yet because I wanna get my grips on. So the next thing I wanna do is just go ahead, open up these grips, we're gonna slide them on. They're a, they're a lock on grip, so that means they're gonna have a little bolt at the very end. So once you slide them on, there's gonna be a little bolt at the very end that tightens them down. Let me get those put on and in position and then we'll be right back in a minute. Okay, so I got the first grip on. Now to put the second one on, I just wanted to show you what happens is these race face ones here, the lock on clip just pops right on to the end. Slide the whole grip on, then take your plug, stick it in the end, hammer it in with your hand a little bit there. And then what I do is I slide my grip back to the plug to I can get my proper alignment. Then what I'll do is I'll just kind of line up how I want them facing. Kind of like that. Okay, good to go there. And then you just tighten down your bolt right here, like so. Once you tighten that down, 
you'll be good to go. So let me finish tightening that all that down. I'm gonna slide my shifter back over to where I want it on my grip, tighten all that down. Then we're gonna go ahead and tackle the pedals and then we'll be done for today until I can get that stem replaced. So let me finish this up and we'll be right back. Okay, so now that I got the handlebars and the grips and everything where I want them, everything's tightened down. Now we just have to go ahead and put the new pedals on. I already took the old pedals off. I'm just using a 15 millimeter wrench, took the pedals off. Now again, to take these off on the left side of the bike, I typic you're typically turning to the right, which is the opposite of what you would think. You're gonna turn it to the right to loosen it and you're gonna turn it to the left to tighten it. On the right side of the bike, it seems to be the same as normal. So let me go ahead and unbox these pedals and we'll start putting them on. Okay, so I just got these pedals out of the box. They are already marked down in the far bottom. You can see the L for the left and there, there'll be an R for the right. See it up in the top left corner, it says R. That's for the right side, here's for the left. So now all I'm gonna do is go ahead, put a little blue Loctite on these threads here. Start tightening them on. Okay, they seem to be on pretty good there. Let me go ahead and do the right side. Get this side on. Again, the pedals are very easy to put on, but I always recommend a little blue Loctite just in case, because you never wanna be out on a trail and have something come loose. So the blue Loctite, it just helps that from happening. Okay. Okay, so we got them on. So let me go ahead, clean this mess up, pull the bike outside where we have better light, and I'll do a walk over of what we did. Okay, so here we go. So today we went ahead and swapped out the handlebars with the new Race Face Atlas blue aluminum handlebars. These have the 1.25 rise. We got the Race Face lock on grips. I already went ahead and put on the Shimano MT200 hydraulic brakes, which if you wanna see a video of doing that, you could just go back into my YouTube channel and look up the Shimano brakes that I did on my Schwinn Boundary. It's the same exact thing, but they're very easy and simple to put on. Then we went ahead and put on the race face pedals. These are super nice. They have the nice spiked bolts here that stick out both sides so that they pretty much lock onto your feet. So when you're pedaling down a trail or a mountain and your feet tend to get a little muddy or wet, your feet won't slide off these pedals because of these nubs here. So again, I really like those. Uh, they're really nice and they look awesome on the bike and they have a little bit of a wider foot pad, which is great if you happen to have bigger feet. So again, the only thing we didn't get to do today was the stem because they sent me the wrong one. So I'm gonna have to go back to the seller and do an exchange to get the new stem. But once a new stem comes in, it's very simple and easy to do. You're just gonna unloosen these back bolts right here. You're gonna unloosen this top bolt. Now I recommend doing it on the ground, not on a stand when you're dealing with your stem, because as soon as you take this top bolt out, your whole fork is gonna slide out from the head tube. So I recommend doing it on the ground. Straddle your front wheel, okay? Like this with your legs. Then what you do is unloosen this bolt, unloosen those two bolts, pop that bolt off, the whole stem slides off, you slide the new stem back on, tighten the two back bolts, put your top bolt back in, make sure everything's blue Loctite and you'll be good to go. So replacing the stem is super easy. It's just the one that I got did not fit these handlebars, so they must have sent me the wrong one. So I'll have to deal with that and get that another day. But so far, it's turning out pretty good. I really like these handlebars. They put my hands right where I want them with that slight rise and I'm really happy with them. So overall, this bike's coming out pretty good. I'll probably have to get a red water bottle holder. And again, eventually I might do a new set of forks for the front, but so far these ones really aren't that bad. I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, again, if I hit some heavier trails and I just don't feel like they're working for me, I'll replace them at that point. But right now I'm gonna put these 
factory forks through the paces because they do have a good bit of travel and they do have the lockout which is nice so if you're doing some jumps or whatnot you can always lock these forks out so that you have a nice stiff front fork or if you're going down some bumpy trails you can open them up and get that travel so again having the lockout on there is really nice depending on how you're going to ride but overall i'm really happy with this bike and i'm really happy with how it's coming along so far so again stay tuned because eventually there's going to be a few more mods coming to this bike Okay, so we are here at Ohio Pal, and this is gonna be the Great Allegheny Passage bike ride. So we just stopped in at the guest services to go to the restroom, and then we're gonna go ahead and go hit some trails. Okay, we're over here by the falls. Okay, here we are. Really nice trails. You can see the river down over the side there. Okay, so I've been riding on this trail for a little while now, and I gotta say, I'm using the fork lockout button right there. You turn it to the right and it locks out your fork so that you don't have as much travel when you're riding your bike. So, so far it works out pretty good. Okay, but overall, the grips feel really good. The handlebars, again, feel really good. I am gonna look for another stem to try to be a little shorter and maybe a little taller, but overall it feels really good. And the pedals feel great as well. So overall, I'm pretty happy with all of these modifications that we did today. These trails are really nice. So if you just want a nice, scenic, long trail, this trail here in Ohio Pal, Pennsylvania is beautiful. Okay, here we are crossing over the river here. It's a beautiful day out. New Year's Eve 2021. It's about 56 degrees and beautiful. Okay, everybody so that's it for today's video i do apologize for the stem not working i'll have to deal with that at a different day but overall the race face atlas handlebars they went on really good i really like the 1.25 inch rise it really puts my hand grips a little closer to where i want them because i have longer arms and i want that little bit of height the race face lock on grips they look great they lock on real nice and tight they have a good bit of grip to them i'm very happy with them i did not film the install of the shimano mt200 hydraulic brakes because i've already done a video on that but again they're very simple to put in but those are on the bike and i put the race face chester pedals on today which again i really like them because they're a little bit more affordable they have the spike lugs that allow your feet to lock into the pedal they have a slightly wider pedal compared to stock gives you a little bit more flexibility if you have bigger feet and i really really just like overall how the bike's coming along Again, eventually in the future, I'll probably swap out the front shock, but that'll be for a different day. I wanna put this shock through its paces a little bit more before I make that final decision. So that's it for today's video. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you. I truly appreciate you all. Thank you for all of your support. And as always, See you in the next video.